good morning my respected seniors and my dear colleagues good now morning, next ma session now next session is with regard to the reforms in the bhartiya nagrik suraksha morning. sahita and before referring to the reforms i would like to just go through that what new acts new codes will be known as criminal procedure code as the bhartiya nagrik suraksha sahita 2023 in short bnss ipc bhartiya nyay sahita 2023 pns indian evidence act as bhartiya saksha adhiniyam 2023 in short bsa so the major objects of bnss the old crpc it is the use of technology and forensic science in the investigation specific timelines have been prescribed for investigation medical reports trial and even pronouncement of judgment and thereafter uploading of the judgment supply of copy of fir to the victim apart from the informant and to inform them about the progress of investigation including through the digital means then victims shall be given an opportunity of being heard before withdrawal of prosecution summary trials have been made mandatory for petty and less serious offenses they have been mentioned here and presence of accused may be on bail can be marked through video conferencing there are omissions of some words that is the metropolitan area metropolitan magistrate pleader and assistant session judge the new definitions which have been added they are the audio video electronic means and it includes use of any communication device which can be for video conferencing recording of process of identification recording the process of search and seizure or for evidence or transmission of electronic communication and the gates have been kept open for any other means which the state government may add by rules in future then bail has been defined it is the definition we all know release of a person accused of or suspected of commission of offence from the custody of law upon certain conditions imposed that could be either by an officer or court and again on execution by such person of a bond now this bond refers to a personal bond or a bail bond and bail bond refers to the accused released on bail with surety and similar as i stated the bail bond and the bond have been defined next is the electronic communication that means the communication that could be written verbal pictorial information or video content that could be transmitted or transferred either from one person to another or from one device to another or from a person to a device or from a device to a person and it includes telephone mobile phone or other wireless telecommunication computer audio video player camera or any other electronic device which could be specified by notification by the central government then comes the change in the definition of investigation the explanation has been added to this definition though it was in the special laws here it is where any of the provisions of a special act are inconsistent with the provisions of this sahita the provisions of the special act shall prevail examples are the jj act or the poxo where the procedure described for the investigation is little bit different then with regard to the words and expressions used in this sahita which are not defined but they are defined apart from the bns in the information technology act so the meanings have to be assigned from there 
Now, as the metropolitan magistrate word is no more, so the definition under section 6 with regard to the constitution of criminal courts, it has been changed. They will also be the metropolitan magistrates will also be known as the judicial magistrates of the first class. Next change is with regard to the court of session. It was again in the high court provided in the high court rules and orders, but now it is in this center. The sessions judge may from time to time make orders consistent with this Saita as to the distribution of business among such additional session judges. And subsection 8, the sessions judge may also make provision for the disposal of any urgent application in the event of his absence or inability to act by an additional session judge or if there be no additional session judge by the CGM. And such judge or magistrate shall be deemed to have jurisdiction to deal with any such application. So these two subsections have been added. The major change is in the Office of the Directorate of Prosecution. Uh, I think it would be much better from here. Now the Directorate of Prosecution will be consisting at the level of the state and at the level of the district. At the level of the state, it will be one director of prosecution and could be any number of deputy directors of prosecution. And at the level of the district, deputy directors of prosecution and assistant directors of prosecution. So the DA will be known as the deputy director of prosecution in that particular district now. DA district attorney. Eligibility for the director prosecution or the deputy director prosecution will be practiced as an advocate for not less than 15 years or is or has been a session judge. Next is the eligibility of assistant director of prosecution is the practice as an advocate for not less than seven years or has been a magistrate of the first class. So this is provided now under section 20. Now coming with regard to their hierarchy, Director of Prosecution will be coming under the control of Home Department of State. Under the Director of Prosecution, the public prosecutors, additional public prosecutors who have been appointed for the cases in High Court, special public prosecutors appointed under Section 18, Subsection 8, then at the district level, the deputy director and the assistant director. So they all are under direct control of the director of prosecution. At the district level, assistant director is also under the control of deputy director and under the control of both the deputy director and the assistant director will be the public prosecutors, additional public prosecutors in districts, and SPPs appointed under Section 18A. Then the assistant public prosecutors who have been appointed for the work in the districts. And assistant director will also be under control of deputy director. So this will be the hierarchy of the directorate of prosecution at the state level and at the district level. Now with regard to their functions, Earlier, the functions were not prescribed. Now for director of prosecution to monitor cases in which offenses are punishable for 10 years or more or with life or with death. Second is to expedite the proceedings and third to give opinion on filing of appeals. So this work with regard to opinion on filing of the appeals it is not prescribed that from the judgments of the magistrate or the session court. So the all appeals are coming. It is concentrated in the office of director. Then comes deputy director to examine and scrutinize police reports. 
monitor cases of offences punishable for seven years or more, but less than ten years, and ensuring their expeditious disposal. For assistant director to monitor cases in which offences are punishable for less than seven years. So this is with regard to their powers, but under subsections 10, it has been stated that notwithstanding anything contained in subsections 7, 8 and 9, what we have done with regard to powers of the director, deputy director and assistant director, all the three shall have the power to deal with and be responsible for all proceedings under this Samhita. And now here, as the powers have been defined, the word other has been added. The other powers and functions of the director of prosecution, deputy directors of prosecution, and assistant directors of prosecution, and the areas for each of the deputy or the assistant directors have been appointed shall be such as the state government may by notification specify. So the post of the assistant director is the new now. Earlier it was not there. Now coming to with regard to the <clears throat> jurisdiction of the magistrate to impose fine, which has been increased. Earlier for magistrate of the first class, these apart from the sentence of imprisonment, not exceeding three years, they could have a, imposed fine not exceeding 10,000. But now it is not exceeding 50,000. So up to 50,000, their power has been raised. And for the magistrate second class, it is up to 10,000 from 5,000. This red portion will reflect which is in the old CRPC and the underlined and bold portion in the Sahita, new Sahita. Another punishment which has been added is of the community service. So community service, which has been borrowed from the JJ Act, it has the same meaning that the per to perform a work for the community, which benefits the community, but without any remuneration. Then there is another change. That while passing the judgment and thereafter on the sentence part, if we had not written the word consecutively, concurrently, the presumption was there that it will presume to run consecutively. But now it has been there that it has to be specifically mentioned with after considering the gravity of offenses, whether that punishments will run concurrent or consecutive. So the words which have been replaced by these red words are the court shall considering the gravity of offenses, order such punishments to run concurrently or consecutive. And further in subsection two, if it is the case of the consecutive sentences, so now the period has been extended up to 20 years. Earlier it was up till 14 years if the sentences are being ordered to be run consecutively. This is new reform. Then starting from the reforms in the earlier chapters of the CRPC and now Sahita. <coughs> This section 35 is the earlier section 41, where the notice has to be issued and thereafter how the arrest has to be made, the satisfaction of the IU that the conditions with checklist which was to be checked. Subsection 7 has been added, which states that no arrest will be made in the cases where the imprisonment prescribed is less than three years and that person is infirm or above 60 years of age without permission of the DSP. So apart from other, this is one more condition added. Then one 
new police officer designated police officer post is there though it is of the same of uh, the police officers which could not be below the rank of assistant sub inspector what shall be the responsibility of that person it is that he would be responsible for maintaining the information about the names addresses of the persons who are arrested what is what is the nature of the offense with which of which they have been booked and they shall be di displayed in the on the board in the police stations which is already maintained and it will be including digital mode in every police station and at the district headquarters so now this designated police officer not below the rank of assistant sub inspector he has to be even informed by the police officer about any arrest made from any spot earlier it was the information of arrest memo to be served upon the relatives or the friends now it has been included that the information will be sent from the spot to this designated police officer even next is with regard to the arrest when made by the private person as i have stated in the earlier slides that the timelines have been added if any arrest is made by any person private person then he has to produce that person before the police officer within 6 hours from the arrest so these words have been added now the section is the older one then next tool which has been given to the police officers is the use of the handcuffs but it is restricted to some of the areas that is with regard to the person who is habitual or repeat offender who or who escaped from the custody or who has committed offense of organized crime this organized crime has also been added now that is the crime committed by two or more persons of the repeated nature then terrorist act drug related crime illegal possession of arms and ammunition murder rape acid attack counterfeiting of coins and currency notes human trafficking sexual offense against children or offense against state and this handcuffing can be used either while making the arrest of a person or while producing such person before the court this is the new reform here is the section 48 which states that every police officer who has made the arrest apart from intimation to the relative or friend it has to be intimated to the designated police officer in the district then comes with regard to the examination of accused by a medical practitioner earlier it was prescribed that such person who is accused and arrested and produced before the medical practitioner for medical examination the person the officer not below the rank of sub inspector would produce him before the medical practitioner but now it is the words added are any police officer these words have been added any police officer replacing not below the rank of sub inspector then again the timeline has been there that the registered medical practitioner with regard to the medical examination of the accused without any delay would forward the examination report to the investigating officer so the word used here why accused is without any delay then comes one another proviso now here the proviso is examination of arrested person it is not used word the accused but of any arrested person if the medical officer or the registered medical practitioner 
is of the opinion that one more examination of such person is necessary, he may do so. So only with regard to the arrested person, one more examination, medical examination of that person can be there if it is opined by the medical officer. Next reform is that now under section 54, that is the identification of person arrested, that is called the test identification parade. The entire procedure is same, but the entire procedure is to be recorded through audio, video, electronic means. So the TEIP has now to be recorded. In this section, only the words which have been added are whether having jurisdiction or not. That is the production of the person arrested who cannot be detained more than 24 hours. So he can be produced before any magistrate, whether having jurisdiction or not. So it has been made clear now. Then the change is there with regard to the forms of summons. Now, apart from the hard copy, the encrypted or any other form of electric communication has been there, which states that every summons issued by a court under this Sahita shall be in writing duplicate signed by the presiding officer of such court or by such other officer as the high court may from time to time by rule direct and shall bear the seal of the court or in an encrypted or any other form of electronic communication and shall bear the image of the seal of the court or digital signature of that officer. So now it could be through the digital mode even apart from the hard copy. Then comes with regard to the service of the summons. Two provisos have been added to both these subsections. Subsection 1 states, as earlier it was, every summons shall be served by a police officer or subject to such rules as the state government may make in this behalf by an officer of the court issuing it or other public servant. Provided that the police station or the registrar in the court shall maintain a register to enter the address, email address, phone number, and such other details as the state government may by rules provide. So these registers which were earlier being kept, now they have been made mandatory under this Sahita. Next, the Subsection 2 stated that the summons shall, if practicable, be served personally on the person summoned by delivering or tendering to him one of the duplicates of the summons. The proviso added is that summons bearing the image of court seal may also be served by electronic communication in such form and in such manner as the state government may by rules provide. Now, next question crops up that what is the benefit of issuing the summons through the uh, mode of the E and otherwise in person also? It is clarified in subsection 3 of section 70. That is the proof of service in such cases and when officer not present. When a summons issued by a court is served outside its local jurisdiction and in any case where the officer who has served a summons is not present at the hearing of the case, an affidavit purporting to be made before a magistrate, that such summons has been served and a duplicate of summons purporting to be endorsed by the person to whom it was delivered or tendered or with whom it was left shall be admissible in evidence and the statements made therein shall be deemed to be correct 
unless and until contrary is proved. Now, subsection three states that the all summons served through electronic communication under section 64 to 71 shall be considered as duly served and a copy of such summons shall be attested and kept as a proof of service of summons. This is section 70 of which the reference has been given in section 70. It states about the service on the some witnesses, which states that in addition to these summons, the summons can be through by electronic communication or by registered post, which was earlier also there. And suppose when the acknowledgement purporting to be signed by witness or an endorsement purporting to be made by the postal employee that the witness refused to take delivery has been received. However, there is proof of delivery of summons under subsection 3 of section 70 by the e-communication. Then to the satisfaction of the court is there if the court issuing summons may deem that the summons have been duly served. So if the summons have been duly served by way of electronic communication, it will deem to be the service. The next change is with regard to earlier the summons service on the persons who cannot could not be found in person could have only be upon the male adult member of his family. But now this word male has been omitted. It is only adult member of his family. So these are the reforms with regard to the summons. Next provision which has been added is through section 86, which is relating to the proclaimed person. There was the, the provision which regard to the declaration of the proclaimed person and the proclaimed offender is the same. Only the changes with is with regard to the nature of the offenses where they can be called as proclaimed offenders. Second thing which has been added that even if the property of this proclaimed person is lying in some other country, but that is the contracting state with our country, that is the country which, with which we have the treaty, then the written application, if made by the police officer, not below the rank of the superintendent of police or commissioner of police, the court can initiate the process, which is the requesting assistance from a court or an authority in the contracting state for identification, attachment, and for feature of property belonging to that proclaimed person, which is in accordance with procedure provided in Chapter 8, which is with regard to the reciprocal proceedings. So this is the new provision added with regard to the proclaimed person. And there is another new provision added with regard to proclaimed person, which we'll do in the further slides. Now, next provision which has been added is the recording of the procedure of search and seizure by the police officers through audio or video electronic means. So now the process of the conducting search of a place or taking possession of any property, article or thing under this chapter or under section 185, including preparation of the list of all things seized in the course of such search and seizure and signing of such list by witnesses. The entire process will be recorded through any audio, video, electronic means and preferably mobile phone. And the police officer shall without delay forward such recording to the district magistrate, subdivisional magistrate or JMIC. So the recording 
has to be there of the search and seizure. Uh, if we go through this Sanita, apart from the place of police station, every recording has been mentioned to be preferably by mobile phone. Meaning thereby that they have made it easy, tried to make it easy for the police officers who have been given the official mobiles so that there is no excuse that there was no person who could have recorded. Next, reform and the addition of the provision is with regard to the attachment for feature or restoration of the property, which is directly or indirectly result of a criminal activity or commission of any offense. If any IO believes during investigation that any property is derived directly or indirectly from the commission of the offense or the criminal activity, then with the approval of the SP or CP could make an application to the court or the magistrate exercising disposal of things found in search beyond jurisdiction. Thereafter, the court has to issue 14 days no show cause notice to that person as to why an order of attachment shall not be made. If that court has a reason that whether before or after taking evidence, all or any of such properties are proceeds of crime. Now, this provision even talks to the extent that before issuing notice, if the court finds that the purpose of issuing notice will be frustrated and the property could have been disposed of, the ex party order can be passed by the court or the magistrate. And if notice has been issued, the person does not appear on the notice, then the court or the magistrate may proceed ex parte. Second, if the court or the magistrate comes, finds that that property is lying with some other person, then that person can also be issued notice under this provision. If the person appears, then reasonable opportunity has been given to hear such person and then the order of attachment has to be passed. And where the attachment order has been passed, then the, that order has to be passed to the district magistrate to ratably distribute the proceeds of crime to the persons who are affected by such crime. And the DM has to execute this order within a period of 60 days, either by himself or through any officer subordinate to him. But if there are no claimants to receive such proceeds or the surplus is there after satisfying the claimants, then those proceeds would stand forfeited to the government. So this is the provision under section 107 of the attachment for feature or restoration of property to the, uh, which is the proceed of the criminal offense. Next reform which has been there, it is under the chapter of reciprocal arrangements. That reform is in the form of section 112 and 113. 112 speaks that letter of request to the competent authority for investigation in a country or place outside India. Suppose if an application is made by the IU during investigation that some material, some evidence or some witness is there in another country 
again that country should be the contracting state then and that witness or that evidence is relevant in this case then the criminal court could issue a letter of request to a court or an authority in that country and that country would examine orally any person who is the witness or who is the acquainted with the facts and circumstances record his statement and if any document is to be produced get it produced and take in possession and forward those that evidence and that collected record or the authenticated copies to the court which issued such letter and every statement recorded or document or thing received under this sub section 1 shall be deemed to be evidence collected during the course of investigation under this sahita that is provided in sub section 3 now suppose such request has been received from the contracting state then upon receipt of a letter of request from that court in that contracting state or an authority in a country or place outside india competent to issue such letter in that country if it is received by our country then the central government if may forward the same to the cgm or the judicial magistrate who shall thereupon summon the person before him and record his statement or cause the document or things to be produced or the central government may send the letter to any police officer for investigation who shall thereupon investigate into the offence as if the offence had been committed within india again all the evidence taken or collected under sub section 1 or the copies thereof or things collected shall be forwarded by the magistrate or police officer to the central government for transmission to the court or the authority from which the request was received so this provision has been recorded uh, added apart from the extradition of the offenders now coming to chapter 10 with regard to order for maintenance of wives children and parents as under the bns the word child has been defined now to be of any gender below the age of 18 years and therefore the word may minor has been replaced with the word child here and similarly this is with regard to explanation this explanation a has been omitted now which was with regard to minor further with regard to the place where the such proceedings can be initiated the place added is where his father or mother resides for the maintenance by the parents from their children so this is the only reform under this chapter now coming to the information in the cases of the cognizable offenses this is the flow chart when the information of cognizable offense irrespective of offense where it has been committed is received by an officer in charge that could be orally or through e communication this has been added now orally it is the same conventional procedure which we have to follow but with regard to e communication that could be taken on record only if it is signed within 3 days by the person giving it otherwise they are not obliged to take it on the record then it is to be entered in a book kept by the officer then proviso that information if given by women of an offence these are of the sexual offences of which the numbers have been changed now 
then it is to be recorded by a woman police officer or any woman officer. And if such victim who is of sexual assault or the sexual offenses is temporarily, permanently, mentally or physically disabled, then it shall be recorded by police officer at the residence of that person or a place convenient to such person. And if need arises, then interpreter or special educators assistance can be taken. And videography of such recording has to be there. And the statement has to be got recorded as early as possible from a magistrate. The change here is that copy of FIR, which has to be supplied free of cost. Earlier, the word informant was only there. Now the victim word has been added or victim it has been used. Next change is with regard to the offenses which are punishable for three years or more, but less than seven years. Then SHO may with prior permission of officer who would not be below the rank of DSP, could conduct preliminary inquiry if he finds that prima facie case is not made out. But that preliminary inquiry has to be concluded within 14 days. But if prima facie case is made out, then he has to proceed with the investigation. Now, the next thing added here which was earlier also there, but not provided under this provision, that person who has reported to SHO, but SHO refused to register, he could report to SP, but if no action is taken, then now an application to magistrate with an affidavit can be moved. So the provision of 156.3 earlier is mentioned here. The addition is that that application should accompanied with an affidavit. The next thing which has been added that looking into the nature and gravity of the offense, SP may require DSP to investigate a particular case. Now coming to 156, earlier 156.3, now 175.3, it states that any magistrate empowered under section 210, earlier 190, may, after considering the application, supported by an affidavit that was made under section 173, subsection 4, and after making such inquiry as he thinks necessary. Secondly, and submission made in this regard by the police officer. So the submission must also be there of the police officer and inquiry has to be there by the magistrate, then order such an investigation as above mentioned. Next thing which has been added is that any magistrate empowered under section 210 may upon receiving a complaint against a public servant, but that should be arising in course of discharge of his official duties can order investigation on receiving a report containing facts and circumstances of the incident from the officer superior to him. And secondly, after considering the assertions made by that public servant, that why that led to the incident so alleged. So the hearing to the public servant has to be given. And this provision has also been added with regard to the public servants in the chapter with regard to the complaint, uh, with regard to the action taken by the proceeding to be done by the magistrate on receiving the complaint. Now, next is the earlier section 157, now section 176, that is the same, but the procedure here states that if there is a rape case and statement of victim has to be recorded, then it shall be recorded by audio, video, electronic means, including mobile phone. 
earlier section we did it was the informant if informant is woman now it is could be the uh, victim may not be the informant now coming to the provisos which have been there under this section 176 that when information is given against any person by name and case is not a serious nature the officer in charge of police station need not proceed in person or depute subordinate officer it was already there second if it appears to the officer in charge of police station that there is no sufficient ground for entering on an investigation he shall not investigate and intimate to the informant about the same it was also there but what has been added that in these two types in these two provisos if action has not been taken then that report has to be forwarded to the magistrate to the ilaka magistrate fortnightly so the cognizable cases in which the in these two two types of cases where action has not been taken where no investigation has been conducted now that report has to be sent to the ilaka magistrate within 15 days next thing which has been added that if information is received qua offense punishable for 7 years or more the officer in charge of police station shall from such date cause the forensic expert to visit the crime to collect forensic evidence and videography of the process on mobile phone or any other electronic device however the period has been given of 5 years to be notified by the state government as the fsls are not available in all the states but if in the nearby state it will be there then notification could be there that that state could avail the facility from the nearby state now coming to the requirement of the police officer to call the witness for recording the statement earlier under section 161 now that is 180 the change is that a male person above 60 years which have replaced the word 65 years and person with acute illness if they have been added could not be summoned that notice under section 160 cannot be there but it would be recorded at the place which is convenient to them however if these persons come to the police station and willing to get it recorded there then such person may be permitted and the statement can be recorded there in the police station with regard to the recording of confessions and statements that was the earlier section 164 now 183 for the offenses of the sexual in nature now the proviso has been added that as far as practicable such statement be recorded by a woman magistrate and if no woman magistrate is there then by male magistrate in the presence of a woman provided further that in cases relating to the offenses punishable with imprisonment for 10 years or more or with imprisonment for life or death the witnesses whoever is brought before the magistrate he or she is under the obligation to record the statement of such witness and this was also earlier provided that if that person whose statement under section 164 is being recorded is temporarily or permanently mentally or physically disabled the magistrate while recording the statement get it recorded through get it videographed now the words have been used shall be recorded now it has been made mandatory shall be recorded through audio video electronic means and preferably by mobile 
So this is the change in 164. Then there was the provision under section 164 capital A CRPC. That is the medical examination of the victim of rape. In case of the rape, that victim has to be produced before the medical examination, medical practitioner for medical examination within 24 hours from receipt of the information. And then the medical practitioner has also been time bound to submit the report within a period of seven days to the IU, who shall further forward it. Now, coming to the Chalan. Under section 193, which was 173, every investigation to be completed without unnecessary delay. However, with regard to the investigation of the sexual offenses and the investigation of the POXO cases, it has been mentioned that it is to be completed within two days, from, uh, two months from the date of recording of information. On completion of investigation, now the final report can be submitted through electronic communication. It is not only that hard copy has to be submitted, through electronic communication it can be submitted. Then information of the progress of investigation has to be made maybe through electronic communication to the informant or the victim within 90 days. Next, apart from the all the things which are to be provided in the final report, that is the Chalan, one more thing has been added that the sequence of custody in case of electronic device. As we have looked into, that the entire procedure of search, seizure, then making the list, then videography of the, uh, the offenses more than seven years in which the forensic experts are to be there, and uh, statement of 164, the electronic, the recording, audio video re recording is required. Therefore, the how that sequence is going on, whether it is in one pen drive and what is the first, then the second, then the third, then the index of that pen drive or the number of devices are there, then those devices telling about, it has to be mentioned in the Chalan after implementation of this notification of this Sahita. Thereafter, one thing more has been added that earlier the compliance of section 207 which is now 230 it could also be there by way of electronic communication that the accused can be supplied the copies of the chalan and the documents through the electronic communication so these are the major changes with regard to submission of the chalan then with regard to earlier section 173, subsection 8, that is the supplementary chalan, the proviso which has been added that the further investigation during the trial may be conducted with the permission of the court who is trying the case and the same shall be completed within a period of 90 days, which could be extended with the permission of the court owner. So after commencement of trial, the further investigation can be there only with the permission of the court. Now, wherever the offences committed by means of electronic communications, it has been added in this chapter, apart from the letters, they could be initiated from where they were sent or from where they, they were received. So at both the, both the courts of the jurisdiction. And even with regard to the supplying of the uh, submitting of the Chalan through e-communication in the section 210, earlier section 190, it has been added that upon a cognizance can be taken by the magistrate 
upon a police report submitted in any mode including electronic mode and with regard to the receiving a complaint of facts the words added including any complaint filed by a person authorized under any special law which constitutes such offence so the things have been made some things have been made clarified and some have been added now next thing which has been added is under section 215 earlier section 195 regarding the prosecution for contempt of lawful authority of public servant or for offences against public justice for offences relating to documents where it was mentioned that no court shall take cognizance of any of these offences of any abetment of any criminal conspiracy to sir commit such offence except on the complaint in writing of the public servant concerned or of some other public servant to whom he is administratively subordinate or of some other public servant who is authorized by the concerned public servant so to do so now this provision has been added in the earlier one there is another change in the earlier section 197 that is with regard to the sanction now the proviso which has been added that the such government shall take a decision within a period of 120 days from the date of receipt of the request of sanction firstly the government has been time bound and in case it fails to do so the sanction shall be deemed to have been accorded by such government so the deeming sanction will be there if no such rejection is received with regard to trials the time bound is there qua the moving of the application by the accused for discharge that could be moved by now within 60 days from the date of supply of copies of documents under section 262 charge has to be framed within 60 days from the date of first hearing on charge now the charge can be of the offences of the same nature not exceeding 5 earlier the number was 3 but within 12 months then evidence could be taken by way of audio video electronic means then the statement of the accused can be recorded even if he is in custody but the condition is that that he his signatures will be taken within 72 hours of noting down that then defense evidence can be taken audio video electronic means that would be designated place to be notified by the state government then the judgment has to be there judgment section 392 it states that it could be passed within 30 days it has to be passed within 30 days which can be extendable to 45 days and on the portal it has to be uploaded within 7 days the time limit for committal of the case is also 90 days which can be extended up to 180 days and it has also been clarified that if any application has been moved before magistrate by accused or by the victim it shall be forwarded to the court of session so it will not be decided by the magistrate but will be forwarded to the court of session the same period for the charge moving the application for discharge and then judgment then on the portal now new thing which has been added with regard to the complaint case that after taking preliminary evidence an opportunity has to be given to the accused before taking cognizance so he has to be heard before passing the summing order and quad public servant i told you that he has to be heard and a report from his superior has to be called if the complaint is qua the offence relating to the 
relating to his duty in the course of his duty hours. Second thing which has been added in the summon case that at the time of the notice of acquisition, again the hearing has to be given to the accused and if the magistrate considers the accusation as groundless, he shall release the accused which amounts to discharge. This is the new thing added. And do in the summon case, if these summons have been issued on the complainant on the particular phase uh, date and on the date fixed, he does not appear. The magistrate shall give him 30 days time to appear. So the summons have to be issued that 30 days time is being given to you to appear. Otherwise, the accused will be acquitted unless and until there is some reason which is recorded by the magistrate. With regard to the warrant case again, if the complainant does not appear before framing on the date but, uh, fixed, and that is the compoundable offence and non-cognizable offence, 30 days time has to be given before framing of the charge. Otherwise, he will be accused will be discharged. With regard to summary trials, some offences have been compulsorily made to be tried summarily. That is the theft, not exceeding 20,000, receiving or retaining stolen property, not exceeding 20,000, concealing or disposal of stolen property, not exceeding 20,000, house trespass, abutment or complaint under 20 of the cattle trespass. Then, Magistrate can try any other case in a summary manner after recording reasons and if he passes such order, that order will not be appealable. But in this summary trial, he cannot impose the imprisonment exceeding three months. Judgment we have talked about. There is another provision. Whenever any document is supplied either by the prosecution or by the accused, then within 30 days that document has to be supplied to the other party. And if the other party admits that document, that document is not required to be proved. If formal proving is required on the denial of that document, then the witnesses have to be summoned and suppose that report, there is a report or that document is prepared by a public servant, scientific expert or medical officer and that public servant has tra retired, transferred or died or is incapable of giving deposition or cannot be found or is likely to cause delay in holding such trial then his successor in officer can depose and his deposition can be recorded by way of audio, video, electronic means. So this is to curtail the trial. Then the power of adjournment of proceedings has been limited to two, which is beyond the control of the party. And that too, after hearing the objections and noting down the reasons. And with regard to legal aid, now the word session trial has been removed. So it can be qua any trial. Then power of magistrate to order person to give specimen. Earlier section 311A, the proviso has been added that the Magistrate for the purpose of specimen or the sample cannot require that he should be arrested. That person without any arrest 
though the specimen or the sample of that person can be taken on the application of the IU. And this is section 355 now, where the explanation has been added that if you require a person personally, the accused personally, then his personal attendance can be marked through audio, video, electronic means. The new thing which I told you has been added qua the proclaimed offenders. If this is the list of the offenses. Now under these, uh, this is the, sorry, earlier this was the list. Now the punishable with imprisonment of 10 years or more, he could be declared as proclaimed offender. And in other cases, proclaimed person. The thing in added is the trial in absentia. Section 356, wherever a person is declared as proclaimed offender, whether he has been charged jointly or not, but he is absconding from the trial. Earlier we used to do close the evidence under section 299. But now, after some fulfillment of these conditions, you can initiate the trial, pronounce the judgment in his absence. The conditions are, trial shall not commence unless a period of 90 days has lapsed from the date of framing of the charge. Second, after that 90 days, two consecutive warrants of arrest with the interval of 30 days have to be issued. And there must be a publication in a national or local newspaper circulating in the area where he last resided. Then inform his friend or the relative about the commencement of the trial. A fix information about the commencement or trial on the conspicuous part of his house and on the police station. Then, after with this, the what satisfaction has to be recorded that the acute that, that the proclaimed person is evading trial. After recording this satisfaction, you can start with the trial, summon the witness, examine in chief, and if no counsel is there, you can even get a counsel appointed. So he will be cross-examined and thereafter the judgment can be pronounced. The thing is that of that judgment, though the punishment will be kept in abeyance, the appeal can be filed, but that appeal can be filed firstly within three years. Secondly, for filing the appeal, that person has to appear in person before the appellate court. So these are the conditions and how the trial in absentia can be there. With regard to plea bargaining, again, time limit has been there that the application can be moved within a period of 30 days from the date of framing charge and the period not exceeding 60 days can be provided for mutually satisfactory disposition. Now with regard to withdrawal of prosecution, no case can be withdrawn, permitted to be withdrawn without giving an opportunity of being heard to the victim in the case. Witness protection scheme, though it was adopted, in the year 2018 in the Mahendra Chavla case, but this Sahita state that every state government shall prepare and notify a witness protection scheme for the state with a view to ensure protection of witnesses. With regard to commutation of sentence, these are the changes that the death sentence can be commuted for imprisonment for life only now. Sentence of imprisonment for life for a term not less than seven years. And sentence of imprisonment for seven years or more for not less than three years. And if less than seven years were there for fine. 
and rigorous for simple for any term. There is some more changes with regard to this provision has been added with regard to mercy petition. Then the major changes have been with regard to the 436A, which is which will be 479. Now, in this case, the half of the punishment was there earlier provided, but if he is the first offender, then he shall be released on bond by the court on undergoing one third of the maximum period of imprisonment. So some benefits have been given to the first offender. However, the duty has been imposed upon the superintendent of the jail that he would move such applications who have completed one third or one half of the maximum punishment to the court concerned. There are no major changes under section 437 or 438 even. These are the sections which have been changed according to the BNS. Even in section 439, there is no such. In appeals, the change is only as the Metropolitan Magistrate is not there now. Then in the appeals in petty offences by only high court, where a high court passes only a sentence of imprisonment for a term not exceeding three months. Earlier it was six months time for the petty offences. This is the minor change. Then there is change with regard to remit or the suspension of the sentence only. That is only the word mail has been omitted. So these are the major changes qua the BNSS. And now any questions, though I know that I have exceeded my time, but any questions from your side? Right. Thank you. Thank you then. Thank you, have a great Thank day. You.